Uh, and so this is going on and on. They talked about wanting to do a gas fee, a carbon fee. This is how they're going to fill in all this revenue that they think that they need or deserve is by going around voter approval. And so we wanted to, to close that that loophole. And it's very popular with people once you can explain it to them. But uh, it's hard. You know, the ballot, we don't get to write the ballot language the way that the legislature does. And so we have to explain what an enterprise is uh, and how they're going around Tabor in order to raise taxes. On your ballot are a couple very expensive questions, including a repeal of Gallagher and voting on fees to help me figure all that out. Michael Fields, who's taking time away from his wife giving birth to be here. Is that <laughs> not quite. She's not, not, in, not in labor yet. But, but she was due today, right? She's due today. Yeah. All, right. all right. Let's start off with Gallagher. Gallagher is one of these things that, as a conservative, I've always disliked mm -hmm. the Gallagher Amendment. I feel what it does is what the left does so well, is that it hides taxes. So um, people think that their property taxes in Colorado, well, they're not that high compared to back when I was in New York. But in fact, businesses pay more, which means we pay more for goods and services. So we're, we're, we're paying the tax. It's just hidden. So why not repeal it? Well, I think the biggest thing is that they're not being honest about it. I think on one hand, it is a property tax increase. Uh, two, it doesn't help businesses. So if this helped businesses, I would have a, probably have a different perspective on it. Let me go with both of those. You said it raises taxes. How does this repeal raise taxes? Because when I read the language, it says beautifully without raising taxes. Well, the legislature writes the language, and as we know from Proposition CC last year, uh, that when they want more money, it normally starts out without raising taxes is, is the key word to tell you. But basically, uh, next year, the assessment rate, um, how much of your house is taxed, would be 5.88% if it is not repealed. If it's repealed, it'll be 7.15%. So you're talking that's over $500 million that we'll be paying more in property taxes if this passes. But it doesn't, that money doesn't go to the state it goes to localities and school so, districts. So, um, yes, that is true. But the, the issue is, is uh, the state backfills money on education. So half of that, so you think about property taxes, half of it goes to those local services, half of it goes to the education system. Um, and the state comes in and backfills that. So if we're paying less in property taxes, the state is going to have to pay more to these localities. All right. So if it's so obviously a tax increase, this thing doesn't have a prayer of passing except for those few words at the beginning, without raising taxes, because this is a local property tax hike. Yeah. Plain and simple? Yeah. So I think there's three reasons why it has a shot of passing. One is because of the ballot language, which we mentioned. Two, the blue book. So that impartial blue book that you're supposed to get fair and, and impartial, the legislature rewrote it to try to hide this property tax. Tell, tell that story really fast, because I've been doing this a lot longer than you have, and I don't think I've ever seen that happen. Yeah. So they, we're, we're, we're at the very last minute... They just write, rip out what the staff has uh, written and put in their own language. Yeah, so you have nonpartisan staff that does months of a process. They talk to the pros, the, the people against. They do a bunch of research. They come up with this blue book summary, and it goes to a committee basically to get a stamp of approval. Um, and they might change a word or two here or there. Uh, this case, they rewrote the title of it. They rewrote the arguments. They move things around. They rewrote, rewrote over half of it. And I think it's really an insult to the process and to those staffers who go in and try to do this in an impartial way. And the legislature what, passed the, the Gallagher repeal and then wrote the, the blue book. And so it becomes a, a campaign mailer uh, for their side that doesn't have to get disclosed. And so uh, that happens. And then they have the campaign has a, will have a lot of money. And that's the other thing is when you start running TV ads and you do mailers and do all this stuff about how great the, the repeal would be, uh, that's why this has a shot of passing. All right. So tell me if... If there was a way to do this right mm -hmm. that you could you could uh, um, get on board with, what would what would it be? Because it would be both you and I do agree mm -hmm. that this this split level is not a good thing. Yeah, so you have two different problems with Gallagher. One is the split level of commercial pays too high of property taxes. Um, they're at 29% assessment rate right now. I think that is too high. But I think it's also interesting to keep it in perspective that our businesses in Colorado, all, this, all the taxes that they pay, uh, we're 17th best in the country still. So even though the commercial property tax is high, we're still competitive. I wish it was top five. I wish it was number one. Uh, but I think we need to keep it in perspective of how much burden uh, taxes in in the state are putting on businesses. Uh, but two, uh, I think, so I would like to see that rate come down from 29%. This does not do that. It keeps it at 29%. Uh, the second thing, though, is that there are certain localities that as um, the assessment rate goes down, their home, home values don't go up as quickly, uh, and they don't have as much commercial property. And so they actually see cuts to their local services. But this is in western Colorado. It is in uh, rural areas of our state 
while the average across the state, we're paying double what we paid per capita adjusted for inflation than when Gallagher passed. We are paying more every year, uh, 10% more even in this recession we'll pay this year. Uh, and so looking at it and saying we are, you know, and this is, you and I know our, ba- our bill goes up every, every year. Our bill went up 30% last year, 30%. Yeah. In, in one cycle. And you think of the average of it last year was 15% across the board. So everybody is, is paying more in the state except in those areas. And so what I would do was have a regional approach and say if housing value or commercial value isn't going up to that same rate, then have a different assessment rate in that area. But they don't have a plan for what comes next. That's the biggest issue I have is they're going to freeze these rates, repeal Gallagher, and then it's the Wild West in terms of trust us as the legislature to fix this problem. I, let me bring it to this. As you know, the... Um, I've been told that the legislature is not going to be able to mess with those mill levy rates. So it's going to be here, it's going to be here, and that's what it is. Because if they try to do it, it's obviously a violation of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. So I've been told, point blank by people who, um, uh, some moneyed interests who say, I guarantee you uh, the legislature is not going to mess with those uh, rates because it's against Tabor. Um, I've seen the legislature get away with a lot on Tabor. Do you buy that? Uh, I don't. I think that it's clear in Tabor that it shouldn't be allowed to happen. Uh, but, you know, you and I could talk about uh, COPs and debt. We could talk about mill levy freezes. We can talk about enterprises, which we'll get into. Uh, there's a lot of holes that are blown into Tabor, and Gallagher is a double check on uh, keeping residential property taxes low. I think it needs to be reformed, but I'm always worried about protecting Tabor when it goes to the courts. And I think legislators don't like Tabor, and they would, would try to do stuff like this. Yeah, our Colorado Supreme Court has taken the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and rewritten it. When uh, Tabor says you can have a four-year timeout yeah. and keep all the excess revenue, they declared Permanent. that that should, for, should be forever. <laughs> and so that's out. They said you need a vote on uh, debt, a public vote, when government goes into debt, unless they call that debt a, per, a certificate of participation. And, of course, and this will lead right next to the next one, mm-hmm. when... You want to raise taxes, as long as you call it a fee, you don't have to ask the people, which is why we have um, the growth dividend, we have the mill levy freeze, we have the faster fee, and of course, the beautiful uh, hospital provider fee. So all of us are paying more in property tax, Mm -hmm. we're paying more for our vehicle taxes, we're paying more when we go to a hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, As a quick side note on that, just to add insult to injury, the way the hospital provider fee was written, that tax is not allowed to show up on your hospital bill. So your hospital bill goes skyrocketing, and you get angry at the hospital when, in fact, the, it was the legislature. Yeah. All these things happened because the state Supreme Court said, as long as you use this three-letter word, fee, not this three-letter word, tax, it's okay. You and I have been fighting this for a long time. You've put Proposition 117 on the ballot. I hope it passes what does it do? Yeah, so it basically closes that loophole uh, on fees. And so, as you said, they're going around the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights, not asking voter approval. So what this would do is if there's a, uh, a new uh, state fee that is over $100 million over its first five years, uh, we're talking big money, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in new programs uh, that you would just have to go to voters and get their consent uh, in order to, to wait, pass wait, 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 it. Slow down, slow down. Because that's really confusing to me. <laughs> You're telling me that if there's going to be a large fee that what we used to call taxes, you have to do what again? You have to go, go get consent. All right, I'm, I'm still confused. You have to go to the people and ask them permission the way we do with every tax. So just because they call it something else, you still have to ask. Yeah, and that's what's I been mean, going on for, for, a, for a long period of time is them, you mentioned faster fees. Just this last year, they did a, a fee on our health insurance pr- uh, plans. And so a million Coloradans are paying more in health insurance. They also put a fee on hospitals. Uh, and so this is going on and on. They talked about wanting to do a gas fee, a carbon fee. This is how they're going to fill in all this revenue that they think that they need or deserve is by going around voter approval. And so we wanted to, to close that, that loophole. And it's very popular with people once you can explain it to them. But uh, it's hard, you know, the ballot, we don't get to write the ballot language the way that the legislature does. And so we have to explain what an enterprise is uh, and how they're going around Tabor in order to raise taxes. This is really fascinating. This is such a simple proposal. All you're saying is if they're going to raise fees, a big fee increase, just ask us first. That's it. Just ask us the way you're supposed to do with debt, the way you're supposed to do with taxes. That's all it is. And on that, 
voting on fees, you would get 70% approval, just across the board. Yep. People, people get that. So help me this. Riddle me this, Batman. On the Gallagher repeal, it has this beautiful language without raising taxes. When I read Prop 117, your proposal, I understand the proposal perfectly. I don't understand the ballot title. Yeah. How did it get to these two different things? One goes this way, the other goes this way, but they're both on the ballot. One has great wording, the other has <laughs> awful wording. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a flaw in the system in that we were supposed to have, you know, equal playing field. The legislature puts something on the ballot or we go out and get the signatures and, you know, go through title board and do the process that we should do. They should be on a level playing field. I think the legislature should have to go through that same process uh, and have to fight for their ballot language that they want and have both sides debate it. That's not what happens. The legislature puts the ballot language on, then the courts, you know, are very deferential to what the legislature uh, decides to do, and then we have to go through a totally different process. And I think really it, it is unfair. And I think, um, you know, it, and ballot language does impact how people vote because it can be confusing or it's simple or it's biased. Uh, what they're able to talk about without raising tax. There's a bunch of without things that I would love to put in there too uh, that isn't allowed. And so I think we need to do some kind of reform to that to say everybody plays by the same rules. We got to get signatures. You got to get votes. Uh, and then we meet it on the ballot. If you're not following exactly what Michael's saying, it is interesting. I've become very expert at this, which is when uh, the Colorado Constitution, Article 4, I think it is, it says that we, the citizens of Colorado, are also the legislature. We're just as equal as the legislature as they are. That's why we have the initiative. That's why we have the referendum. And when we want to put something on the ballot to raise taxes, we have to go to the title board. And these are three guys who sit there and they draw up the, they draw up the language. And it has to be very specific. It has to not uh, push one way or the other. But when the legislature, this co-equal branch to we, the legislature, does it, they get to write their own ballot language without raising taxes to benefit unicorns, <laughs> bunnies, and magical creatures. Would you please do this? It is such an obvious f structural flaw mm -hmm. in, in what we do. Yeah, and I would say one thing, though. Prop CC last year that had that same kind of language that failed really gave me confidence that people look into this, they read about it, they learn about it. Um, and even if the legislature is going to buy his stuff, that doesn't mean that it's going to pass necessarily. And I think the same thing is going to happen uh, with Gallagher this year is that people are going to look at it and say, wait a minute, <laughs> my property taxes will be higher uh, if this passes. Let's at least be honest about that. And I think there is this distrust of state government because of how they spend money, one, uh, but then two, the tricks that they try to do. And so I think it's starting to backfire on them. But I would like to see that system become more equal for the people and for legislators. The money aspect on this is also just terrible because um, yours proposal is going to be easier to demagogue, but you don't have a ton of money. The Gallagher Amendment is going to be harder to defeat, but you don't have a lot of money. The other side has, has the most. How do you get the word out? Yeah, so it's, it's grassroots, and that's really what happened with Prop CC. I think that's what's happening now. If you post the story about Gallagher, for example, uh, I saw somebody, somebody randomly posted it on a Nextdoor app, and 23 people right away were like, we're not doing that. I read the article. Um, really, when, when you are right on the issues, and I think we are on fees, and I think we are on property taxes, uh, it, it actually moves between people. And you use social media, you use ads that you can. Um, but the other side's always going to have more money when they're pushing for tax increases. That's always the case. It's always been the case in Colorado. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they pass. And so, uh, you know, you just word of mouth, doing radio, going to every group you possibly can. Uh, and, and people get it. And, and so I'm, I have more confidence. In, in voters, especially with ballot issues, uh, and, and I think it'll, it'll show again this year. The one downside is the year. When there's an off-year election, people have more brain space to read into all these other ballot issues that are important. On a year where we've got Cory Gardner and Donald Trump and uh, all these other issues, um, I worry that there's just not enough oxygen in the room to get to these down-ballot issues. So. We've got our jobs cut out for us. Yeah, and I think that's right. Uh, I, I think when you look at it, there are a lot going on, but people do end up focusing in on it. The media is doing a little bit of, of focus on the issues. Um, but I also 
I, there's nothing you can do. I mean, they're up in certain years. You got to fight them or, or uh, you know, support them, and that's just the way it is. But, um, yeah, I, I think that, that you want to be winning right now going into the time when all the millions of dollars uh, come in. And, and so, uh, you know, I think we'll see what ends up happening. But it's, it's a good year, and it's a good year to, to talk about all these different issues. People want to get information. Where do they go? Colorado Rising State Action. Uh, that just rolls right yeah, off the top. Yeah. Colorado Rising, Rising State, State Action. Action. Yeah. Yeah. Your marketing firm come up with that one? <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Fields, thanks for all you do. Thanks. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button, too. You don't want to miss a single show.